while you and I gather here to celebrate Ash Wednesday, tonight, well, almost every restaurant around will be filled with people because instead of celebrating the beginning of Lent, they're going to be celebrating Valentine's Day. That gets a higher billing along the way <laughs> than Ash Wednesday. And you know, I, I, I think that that's okay. You know, everywhere. I, I, Kelly was here this morning, and she was talking about having a, a, a Valentine's Day party for the kids at school today. And I, I was thinking about that, you know, probably there are red hearts all over the place in that school. I know on Tuesday I was in the hospital, and every floor I was on as I was walking from patient to patient's room, you know, there were hearts all over the place for Valentine's Day. And I heard a story yesterday that I thought was interesting about the Valentine's Day bandit in Portland. And it's about this guy who, for years, for over 40 years, will go around the city of Portland, Oregon, putting up large red paper hearts in preparation for Valentine's Day. Everywhere, all over the place. And he died this past year, and. They were talking about how other people were taking up that ministry of putting up the hearts. You know, people will give boxes of chocolates today that are heart-shaped. And I had some friends who owned a florist, and they said that today is the biggest rose day in the whole year. You know, it's just one of those things. You know, hearts and flowers... Those are the signs of love. And yet, you and I gather here, and we don't have hearts today. We don't give you a little red heart to remind you that you are loved. Instead, we give you an older sign of love, one that dates back 2,000 years. We give you the sign of the cross. We give you that sign of the cross with ashes, which is even older than the heart and expresses a deeper form of love. It's not the romantic love. It's not the joy-filled gift of falling in love and really having someone very special in our lives. It's the cross that recognizes sacrificial love, the one who gave his life for us on the altar of the cross, the one who died, to ultimately reveal how deeply we are loved by God. The cross is not a sign of death, but the greatest sign of love, much older and much greater than the hearts that will fill everywhere today. You know, it is that great sign of love. And that's the way we begin Lent, by being marked with the sign of the cross, that sign of love. And you and I are invited to live that love more fully. That, that's what Lent is about. I always think that, you know, it strikes me that if we didn't have Lent, we'd have to invent it. Because we need that time where all of a sudden we're going to make an effort to be better, to be more. And that's really what Lent is about. It's a decision to be more. <laughs> that's maybe another reason why we're marked with the cross, which is also a plus sign. That decision to be more, to be more loving, more kind, more faithful, more like the Lord to be those ambassadors for Christ that St. Paul calls us to be, to be signs of his love. And the question is, how do you do that? And the Lord Jesus himself tells us very simply. He gives us what the ancients of the church referred to as the great hinges that open the door to holiness. Prayer, fasting, and works of charity that we fast, 
And the purpose of fasting is not to go hungry. It's not some sort of diet that we go on because, well, you know, I could use a little more fasting in my life. You know, I just got back from a cruise and I gained a little bit. And yeah, I, I could use Lent just for that purpose alone. But fasting isn't about somehow just giving up something. It's not about letting it go. It's about doing with less and making our life more simple. That somehow you and I, we can do with less. We don't need to eat as much as we do. We don't need to do as much. We don't have to have those things to give up those things that we really don't need to kind of simplify our lives. That's an important thing. And every time we long for that, whatever it is that we've given up, whether it's something we don't eat or something we don't drink or time that we don't spend on scrolling through the phone or whatever it is that we give up, we use that for prayer. But somehow, every time I want to do that, I, or eat that, or drink that, I think, Lord, draw me closer to you. To use that longing, that desire for prayer. A reminder to turn to the Lord and ask him to draw me closer to himself. But the third part is equally important that to just give something up and to keep it doesn't do any good at all. You might as well eat it. Don't worry about it. No, because we're called to give it away. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, I used to give up desserts. But the ones, Lent was the time of the year that my mother, because she was fasting, would always make desserts. And I gave them up during Lent. And so I always kind of made sure that in the back of the refrigerator, you know, some of the things that I really liked when she made them got, got put back there where nobody could find it. And then on Sunday, which is not Lent, I could eat it. Hello. So what good was that? You know? If we don't give it away, then we really haven't given it up. If we don't somehow use it for others, then it doesn't have any meaning. No, the prayer and the fasting should lead us to be more charitable, more giving. Whether it is giving up time to do this and spending that reaching out to others in need, or those who might be more lonely or whatever, to somehow make a difference. Those three, fasting, prayer, and works of charity, are the hallmark of Lent. That's the hallmark of, of this season that calls us to grow, to become more like Christ. You know, to become more. And so at the end of this liturgy, instead of a final blessing, we're going to invite you to come to the baptismal font, and there will mark you with ashes. And there I would like you to make the commitment. You know, we could tell you, turn away from sin and be faithful to the gospel. We could tell you that. And that's okay. You don't have to listen. But I'm not going to let you do that. <laughs> I'm going to make it a little more difficult for you. I want you to say, I will turn away from sin and be faithful to the gospel. I want you to make that commitment. And we will sign you with ashes, that sign that you will become more like Christ. We'll sign you with that great symbol of love. God's love for us and our love for God. And then we'll begin that season of 40 days that we strive to become more. More like Christ. More loving, more kind, more prayerful, more compassionate more merciful, more, more loving. In the end, the season of Lent is a time that we do with less to become more.